This machine really sets the tone for large part manufacturing. Uh, you can swing up to 670 millimeter on this, and we make them up to six meters long. Well, with Mark from WFL Mill Turn Technologies, he's going to talk us through the M50G behind me, but not just about that, the complexity of the components and the problems that can throw out there. So first of all, the components themselves, what are they? Uh, on the left side, you see a screw compressor uh, for compressor, large compressors. And then on the right side, we have a uh, jet engine fan. So basically. critical components. Yes, for And sure. I'm assuming, as you'd expect with WFL, difficult materials, complex parts. Super tough, titanium, and Inconel. Okay, the machine itself, though, just tell me a little bit about the specification of the machine. This machine really sets the tone for large part manufacturing. Uh, you can swing up to 670 millimeter on this, and we make them up to six meters long. Right, that's a, that's a very big component. I'm assuming this one is about three meters long. Yes, exactly. Like small in comparison. Yeah. And also a lot of tooling as well. A lot of tooling. Can come up with uh, 200 tools, and we also have a robot tracker that keeps the next tool close to, to the spindle for minimizing tool change times. Keeping those spindles, that, that spindle turning. Yeah, exactly. And a big B-axis here as well. Big B-axis, we have up to uh, 45 kilowatts. This one is a 27 kilowatt for what it's doing. Okay. Again, tying in super powerful with that complex material. But this is gonna throw up its own problems when you're making these complex parts. So what happens, for example, if I'm doing a big part with a big bore. If you're doing large bores, we have boring bars up to three meters long that can reach in into parts for tubing, for different kinds of uh, diameters. Yeah, up to three meters. Uh, yeah, so that's going to throw out its own. I mean, how are you going to measure down there? It's really tough, first of all. So it's, it's not a, easy. A long probe. <laughs> a long probe will tend to, to dip and so we, we try not to use that. We do ultrasonic measuring, so we do it by sound. We can tell the wall thickness and we can tell concentricity strictly by sound. Okay, so you're measuring the OD with a, a probe as usual and then the ID ultrasonically. Absolutely. So now you check concentricity down the whole part. The entire part, at any, at any given point on the part, we can tell exactly what the wall th thickness is and the concentricity. Okay, now you, you could, I say you can only, but you can only bore up to three meters, but the ultrasonics could measure even further if required. Yes, we can, actually. Uh, we have two different types. We also do laser scanning. So laser scanning is a benefit because it can measure the surface. It actually takes a picture of the part and can create a 3D uh, rendering of that part so that you can match it perfectly with what the print was. Okay, because with these parts, I mean, look at these parts here, they're huge. So you don't want to take them off the machine, back in, you're going to lose that repeatability, that accuracy. That's exactly right. You never want to have to transport something so big to a CMM. And so we have the capacity to measure on the machine if it allows in, the, in that particular industry. Okay, and with that laser scanner, what is it actually producing though? It's producing a map of the part so that you can create a 3D image and match it up with the 3D image you started from so that it's perfectly balanced and accurate. Okay, and then if there are slight, I mean, you wouldn't expect there's that inaccuracies on these machines, because as we know, WFL, high precision, but if sure. there are, for example, maybe if there's a problem with the boring, for example, you have adjustable machining? Yes, for that, we have a special boring fixture by Kaiser that we blend with our machine so that we can create a first a fine bore and then a finished bore, and it's all programmable. You don't have to interface the operator at all. It's all completely programmable. So there you have it, a brief insight into how they overcome some of the issues of machining these really complex and big components. That's from Mark from WFL Milton Technologies.